Okay. <coughs> so the first announcement is just a reminder that today is really the last day for you to be logging into Alex and starting to work on your topics. <clears throat> so by the end of the day, you ought to have created your account, completed your knowledge check, and be actively working on your topics. Um, tomorrow, I will start dropping students who have not done those things. Um, also, we still need a note taker for this class. So I just wanna remind you about that. And please, if someone could step forward, we desperately need a note taker. And just as a reminder, at the announcements, I have the note taker announcement and there's a link where you can apply. So please do that. Remember, you'll get either priority enrollment or service hours, which are both good deals. Um, also about Alex, it looks like we might be getting free access codes. So I mentioned that last time, it's not for sure, but please don't pay for Alex, just use that free financial aid code when you sign up. So again, from the homepage in the table, click on Alex, either the text or the picture. And this is that financial aid access code highlighted in green. So please make sure that you use that. Okay, so there's that announcement stuff. Um, of course I don't have that open. Okay, I wanted to talk to you guys about the researcher discussion assignment. Let me see, do I still have, no. The update closed a lot of the stuff I wanted to use today. And it's still kind of slowly opening things. Um, and Also open our syllabus. Okay, so this is our syllabus. And I have um, due dates for this researcher discussion assignment posted on the schedule. The entire project is due in week 14. However, I have three checks that are due intermittently. So the first check is in week four. All right, so right now we're in week one, we're right here on Friday, right by the end of the day tomorrow, you should have hopefully completed the topics in module one. And remember, if you get 100%, if you complete all 13 topics, you'll automatically get 100% on module one and 100% on the module one review. I believe the scores don't show in your Alex gradebook until after the due dates. So in other words, even if you completed module one now, I believe it doesn't show in your gradebook until after Saturday midnight, unless anybody can tell me otherwise. I'm pretty sure that's correct. And then you wouldn't see the 100 for the module one review until after Monday at midnight. Also by now, you ought to have made your first post in the discussion in the week one discussion. That's the initial discussion post due. And then by Sunday, you ought to respond to at least two students. Okay, but going back to the researcher discussion assignment. 
So I have this researcher module, and this is where I have information. And this is also where you're going to be uploading the first check, second check, third check, and the final project when you have it completed in week 14. So it'll be due May 14. Okay. So this is where the general info is. I've created a video that walks you all through how this assignment works, um, but I still wanna talk about it today. I've also uploaded here the actual assignment document in a Word document format and also a PDF format, because sometimes the PDF is just easier to view if you're looking on your phone real quick for something. Um, but you're probably going to want to download the actual Word doc. And that's where you're going to be copying and pasting and typing. OK, so the basic idea is you're going to be choosing 10 weeks out of the semester to focus on uh, before the due date. I will accept these late, but this is the basic idea. You're gonna pick 10 weeks as we move along. So in other words, if you miss a week, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so you're gonna choose 10 weeks. And for each one of those weeks, I want you to be thinking about you know, things that inspired you, things that help to motivate you or change your thinking or beliefs, or on the contrary, things that might have discouraged you or made you feel uncomfortable, um, if you've witnessed any microaggressions, um, if anything has been upsetting or uncomfortable to you during that week. So these things could be you know, something directly that transpired in the class, in Alex, in the discussion. It could just be something going on in, you know, on the campus or in your community or really anywhere. And then also, you know, reflections about me. Was there anything that I could do better uh, to be more helpful, to step in, to clarify, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so at, by the end of the semester and by the end of week 14, this is really going to come together kind of like a journal, right? So each one of those weeks, you're going to be writing about stuff going on during that week. And hopefully this will kind of evolve over the semester. And so I have the due dates here, all of this stuff. Um, you're going to be self-grading yourself for each one of the 10 weeks that you choose. And then at the end, there are these final reflections. And so each one of these things is worth 10 points for a total of 120 points. Everybody ought to be able to get full credit for this. Okay, so... Do I have... Okay. So this is the Word document. So you guys will download this. And let's say you choose week one to be your first week. So I have 10 of these weekly pages for the 10 weeks that you choose. And then at the end, I have the reflection pages. This is final reflection one of two, final reflection two of two. Okay, so let's just say for your first one, you say, okay, I'm gonna choose week one. Hey, let's get started, right? So you're gonna put week one here, copy and paste your initial discussion post here. So you go to our class, go to the discussions, Go to week one. And so you can either literally just copy and paste like this. Oh, 
Okay, it even copied the image. And you don't have to worry about formatting, you know. And then copy and paste any relevant conversation or conversations here from the discussion. And what is relevant? Anything that inspired you, anything that upset you, anything that encouraged you, anything that discouraged you. Okay, so basically something that you're going to be able to write about here under number three. Okay, so the conversation doesn't have to you be, you know, have you in it. The conversation could be between two of your classmates, between me and a classmate. It could be between you and a classmate or you and me. But so you're just going to copy some discussion. So maybe these two. And you might want to see if I can pull it up. You might want to pull up the snip. The snipping tool. It comes automatically downloaded, at least in a, a Microsoft operating system. Can't remember what it might be called on an Apple. Does anybody know? But you can snip. And let's just say, you know, this is the conversation that I'm going to put here. And then number three, share your thoughts on the above. So you can reflect on what you shared, you can reflect on the conversation and anything else from that first week. Okay. Like, I don't know, it was interesting to see how Uh, JD asks, yeah, instead of copying everything, can we cut out an excerpt? Absolutely. Yep. You know, I, I think it would still be nice for me to kind of see where it came from, at least, if you could include that part. But, um, yeah. So it was interesting to see how, let's see how TWI is taking ESL and working. And working already as an accountant. So inspiring, <laughs> right? And then maybe something about all of our discussions in the Zooms, right? I mean, there be, could be so much stuff. So, I don't want to give a full kind of quantity requirement, but I would say about a paragraph. Um, so does that make sense? You know, maybe something about the Super Bowl. That's a that's having a huge impact on Southern California right now. I don't know, good, bad. Um, I, I know some people who have some really strong feelings kind of both ways. I'm a huge football fan myself. So I think it's cool and I wish I could go, frankly. But, um, you know, I know one of my closest friends just really doesn't like football in the NFL for all kinds of different reasons. And, um, you know, I have a family member who just really hates any kind of sport that involves violence, um, you know. So there's always so much stuff to talk about is what I'm saying. Okay, and then once you're done, so this is one week, and look, I've just done it with you, you know, in like five minutes or whatever, and then you can just come here and put, okay, I did week one, I'm going to give myself 10 points. I already had some of these filled out. I should delete them. Probably because I was doing this in the video and saved it. So you can grade yourself. You just type which week and give yourself however many points you want.
All right, so you're gonna do this week by week. And um, yeah, so hopefully you'll have a few weeks, if not all four weeks by that first check. So you'll just save and then, um, let me close the sniffing tool. And then you'll upload it. Right here. You'll upload that document, that Word document right here. You can just start assignment and upload it. And yes, there was a question about topics, and those do refer to the individual topics in Alex. So, So everybody should, by the end of the day, have created their account. Remember when you first create your account, you have to go through the tools tutorial um, and do an initial knowledge check. And so your home page ought to look like this with the timeline view or the pie view. And then right like right now up next module one so far i've only completed four of the 13 topics. And they're due tomorrow by midnight by 1159 pm. And so I would continue my path. I know, I better get on it, right? This is called a topic, okay? And you have to get five problems in a row for Alex to say you've learned that topic. And there are 13 topics due by tomorrow. So did that answer that question okay? So negative three to the fourth. So let's see, three times three is nine. Three times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81, right? And it's gonna be positive. Negative times negative, negative times negative. Um, OJ, if you're at module 13, you are way ahead. And I have had students do that before. I mean, that's just awesome. You're probably, you know, if, if you want to, um, I think there are only 14 modules. So when you complete it, if you want to reach out to me, I can open the final for you before you forget everything. So, if, you know, you can definitely move ahead in this class. As soon as you complete stuff, you can just keep moving ahead. And then four cubed is 64. Right, so they want you to, you know, get so many in a row to be deemed um, learning the topic. I used to remember some of these. Okay, so this is going to be negative 216, and that's going to be 49. See, I got three in a row right, but it gave me credit for all five. And then I can move on. Woo! <laughs> okay. And yeah, you can always click here and use the cards to work on other topics if you want. But I recommend you just keep continuing your path and doing the problems that are given to you. Okay. And then you can click up in the upper left-hand menu and go back home. So now it shows I've done five of 13 topics. And 
you know, they use all this terminology. As soon as you've kind of completed a topic, they say you've learned it. And then once you've also, you know, gotten those correct on a knowledge check, they say you've mastered it. I believe that's the, the language that they use in here. But um, also up in the upper left corner, the menu, if you scroll down, this is where your textbook is, just reminding you. Okay, you go up to the menu, scroll down, and this is where your textbook is. Okay, and your textbook has um, <clears throat> videos. And then, you know, I know if it were me, and I've posted some guidance for success. Me in a class, I would attend all of the live Zooms. I would read the book. And then I would start doing the work in Alex. So I know oftentimes students in a math class will just go right to the work. And then oftentimes there's confusion and it's frustrating. And, you know, it's worth it to put the time in, in advance and be well prepared and then go and do the work. And then it's easier and it's not frustrating. And, you know, you feel that sense of success instead of, oh, I can't do it, you know. So that's my suggestion. Okay. Now, if you would all, let's see. Maybe I should put you guys in breakout groups for while I try to set something up real quick because I wasn't able to because my computer was restarting and updating. Um, I'm going to put you guys in breakout rooms. And here are the questions for you guys. I just feel like it's nice to talk to your classmates instead of always just listening to me talk. Um, you guys might want to form study groups. You know, in the past, I've had students create a Discord, if anybody knows what that is. <laughs> but that's a separate platform where students can go on and ask each other questions and meet up and things like that. But, um, so let's see, I'll give you guys a couple of things to talk about. Of course, you know, share your name or nickname. Um, just how's it going? We're at the end of first week. And oops, I meant to control return. And what is working well so far and not so well? Like anything you can share with your classmates, okay? So obviously just your name or a nickname, how it's going this first week, and then what's working well for you? Like, hey, I went to the Math Success Center and I got tutoring, or I used the net tutor, or I did this, I did that. Okay, and anything not so well, maybe you can ask and one of your classmates can help you. Okay, so I'm just gonna put you in there for a couple of minutes while I'm setting up something else, a Kahoot, and um, I'll bring you back, okay.
Okay, we're just waiting for everybody to come back. About another minute. Okay, I think we're all back now. All right, so has anybody played Kahoot? You know, down at the bottom, there are reactions. You can raise your hand. You can type it, you know, select one of the, uh, like, thumbs up or love. There used to be no negative ones, but let me see. No, they've added negative ones now. <laughs> But anyways, feel free to let me know how you're doing with those reactions. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Has anybody played Kahoot before? You guys are, yeah. All right. You guys are going to go to this www.kahoot.it. You can click that, it might link for you, or you can at least copy and paste it. And it'll ask you to enter the game pin there. Oh, I guess I can copy and paste the link here. So if you guys can, want to click that, <clears throat> you can put in whatever name you want. Got one taker so far. Let me put my hand down. <laughs> I'm showing those reactions. Where are they now? So this isn't really for points or anything, um, but it's good practice and it makes it, you know, hopefully a little bit more fun. So we got four people so far. Come on, y'all. <coughs> There's five. <laughs> I'll just give you guys a few more seconds or so. Six people. We have three more. If you guys want to sign in. And again, you don't have to use your real name. You could put anything. Seven, we got two more. <laughs> Mm 
Are you guys logging in the other two or no? <laughs> this is called Kahoot. And um, it's gonna be a review of order of operations, which we did on Wednesday. Yeah. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Trivia. That would actually be fun. We could do that sometime just for fun. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start it. Okay. I'm sure everyone is just dying to start. <laughs> No, no need for head math. Grab a pencil and some paper. Or you could do it, you could try it mentally. All right, I'm gonna start, okay? So basically a question is put up. You guys ought to see either on your phone or on your computer, um, different options. And you're going to select by pushing on the color. Yeah, like red, blue, yellow, or green that corresponds to the answer. And there are 14 seconds left. Okay, so this one, the correct answer was 10. Four people got that right. And so with the order of operations, you wanna do the multiplication first and then the subtraction. Okay. All right, next up. Okay, Laura, can you see him now? Okay, and everything. Yeah, sorry. We'll get better at this as we go along. <laughs> All right, so here we want to do the exponent first. So I'm going to leave that stuff and I'm going to do the 10 squared first, which is 100. And then we do multiplication or division left to right. So I'm gonna do this division, four divided by two is two, and then do the multiplication. Okay.
Okay. So here we want to work inside the parentheses first. And you would you do addition or subtraction from left to right. You could also do the plus three minus three cancels each other out, but I'll go ahead and just do it step by step. So now 27 minus three is 24. And then divided by eight is three. Okay, are you guys doing these in your head? <laughs> Okay, John Wick has reclaimed the lead. All right, so again, we want to do multiplication or division, right? The division comes before the subtraction. So 25 divided by five is five, and then five minus five is zero. Okay. And I have to keep moving around all my windows. Um, John Wick, firm lead, Edward close behind. Okay, so again, we want to do the division before the addition. Right, remember the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And I like to think of, you know, parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication or division from left to right addition or subtraction from left to right. So there's no parentheses, there's no exponents, there's no multiplication. So the next thing up is this division here. And then of course we do the addition. Okay. okay. Right, JD. All right, so everybody got that. You want to do the exponent first. Then the multiplication. And then the subtraction. Okay.
All right, so it looks like time might have run out on a couple of people. Um, we want to do the exponents first. Did you guys know with powers of 10, it really, the exponent tells you how many zeros there are. Like for instance, 10 to the one is just 10. There's one zero there. 10 squared is a hundred. You have two zeros. 10 cubed is 10 times 10, which is 100 times 10 is 1,000. And there are three zeros. 10 to the fourth, you guessed it, you have four zeros, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so 10 to the fourth, you get four zeros. 10 cubed, you got three zeros. And then you can just add left to right. 10,000 and 1,000 is 11,000 plus one is 11,001. <coughs> okay. We're moving along. All right, so here we want to do inside the parentheses. And three times three is nine. And then 81 divided by nine is nine. Two more left. All right, everybody got that one? Multiplication first, and then the addition. Okay. Last one. All right, so we're going to do the exponent first. That's a hundred. and then do the division. Sorry, the handwriting. It's hard to write oh, using this cursor. It's 106. Okay. Wick for the win. Are you guys watching the Olympics at all? Well done, Wick. Anybody watch the snowboarding half pipe last night? <laughs> I'm such a huge fan, huge fan. All right, let me see. Um, you know, let's take a break right now and we'll come back at 10, okay? I'll see you in a bit.
Okay, we're waiting for players. We got one. I put the link in the chat. <laughs> we got two players. We got three players. <laughs> This one's on fractions and there's four. Where's our reigning champion? <laughs> hmm. Maybe already here under an alias, I don't know. There's five. Are you guys going to check out the return to campus town hall today at two o'clock? Is anybody taking classes on campus? Yeah, how's it going, Jay? You can come off mute if you want to, or you can chat. We've got six players. JD at PCC. All right, nice. You know, I miss it too. I just not ready yet. <laughs> hmm. I miss being in person though. Hmm. We could be doing cahoots in person. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's it's quite an adjustment, I'm sure. Hmm. All right, is that it, everybody? Let's see, how many people do I have here? There are nine students and only six are playing. Okay, going once, going twice. Oh no, we've lost one. <laughs> What happened? Okay, we're back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Okay, here we go. You can still play if you're not logged in. But here we go.
Is this too much time? Okay, one person got it. So you want to convert to the same denominator, which is ninths. So you're going to change the third, thirds to ninths by multiplying by a three on the bottom and a three on the top. Multiply straight across. So you have negative three ninths plus six ninths. Now you have the same denominator. So you have six of them minus three of them. That gives you three of them. And then you can divide the top and the bottom by three. So you get one third. Okay. All right, doing better this time. Two people got it right. So again, we want to find the LCD. You could either look for common multiples, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 8, 16, 24, or you could notice 8. is two times two times two and uh, oops, two I said, <laughs> and three is prime. So you're gonna need all of these for the LCD. You could also think to yourself, these two numbers are relatively prime. So you can just multiply them together and you get 24. So here you want to multiply by three over three because you want to get 24 on the bottom. And here you want to multiply by eight over eight because you want to get 24 on the bottom. <clears throat> so you get 15 24 minus 16 24 so 15 of them minus 16 of them gives you negative one of them. Okay. Moving on.
Jesús. Less than a minute left. Okay, two people are getting these. Don't know if it's the same two people, but we need to find the LCD. Oops, between four and five. So again, you could do multiples or you could notice these are relatively prime, right? You could think of kind of building up the least common denominator. You're going to need two twos or four, and you're going to need the five. So the LCD is 20. Oops. <clears throat> so you want to convert the fifths and the fourths to twentieths. So here you need to multiply by a five on the bottom and a five on the top. Here you need to multiply by a four on the bottom and on the top. And then multiply straight across on the top and the bottom. And now you have the same denominator. So you have five of them and you have 12 of them. So all together, you have 17 of them. Okay. Hints. Okay. There are fewer of these. I know it takes a while. All right, Laura has pulled into the lead.
right. We got two correct answers. So there are a couple of different ways you could do this. When you multiply a whole number times a fraction, <clears throat> you could think of negative 12 as negative 12 over one, and then just multiply, multiply straight across on the top and on the bottom. And then simplify, divide the top and the bottom by six. Right, you divide the top and the bottom by six. Another way to do this is by cross canceling. So again, you're thinking of the whole number as being over one or the integer as being over one. And then six goes into 12 twice. So you have negative two times five is negative 10. Okay. Are these fun or not so fun anymore? <laughs> Tell the truth. Laura's in the lead. Okay, neutrals, fair enough. Okay, fair enough, Talitha. Am I pronouncing your name right? Talitha, maybe? All right, so we have one correct answer. Um, first, we wanna convert this mixed numeral into an improper fraction. So you do eight times five, which is 40, plus four, so you have 44 fifths. Right, so again, eight and four fifths, you do eight times five plus four. And eight times five is 40 and then plus four. Okay, and then you can cross cancel. 11 goes into 44 four times. And then you can multiply straight across. So four times 10 is 40. And five times one really is just five. 
and then divide top and bottom by five and you get eight. Okay. So more so than this being fun, hopefully this is just giving you an idea if you still need to really work on your fractions is you're going to want to do that to be successful. And we have a new leader, OJ has taken the lead. Talitha, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, three of you got this one, well done. So first we wanna convert both of these to improper fractions. So again, you do four times seven is 28, plus six is 34. And then three times nine is 27, plus five is 32. And here, nothing's going to cross cancel, right? Seven is a prime number. 34 and 32 are not multiples of seven. Either is three or nine, dividing into either one of those. So you really need to just multiply those on a calculator. <clears throat> and you get 1,088. And then seven times nine is 63. Now 63, let me, let me pull up the calculator here. For heaven's sakes, why won't it let me, okay. So 1,088, divided by 63, it goes in there 17 times wholly, and then there's some remainder. You know, if you think about back in the day when you did long division, you know, it would go in there wholly 17 times, right, et cetera, et cetera and then you have some remainder. So 17 times 63 is 1,071, and then subtract that from 1,088. <laughs> And 
And you have 17 left over. Okay. And these, there's some arithmetic in there. All right, there you've got this one. So there are a couple of ways you can think about this. You could think about dividing by four as dividing by four over one. And when you divide by a fraction, you invert and multiply. Okay, so dividing by four is the same as multiplying by one fourth. And then multiply straight across. You could cross cancel if you want. And you get one sixth. Okay, just a couple more. All right, cool. It's all good. We're all here to learn all this stuff. So don't feel bad if you don't already have it down. You still have time to learn all of this. And those practice worksheets ought to be helpful in the fractions module in Canvas. And yep, those Khan Academy videos ought to be really good.
And there's just one more after this one, and then we'll finish up the <laughs> module topics in Alex. Okay. So again, we want to convert these to improper fractions. So four times seven is 28, plus two is 30. One times five is five, plus one is six. And then invert the second one and multiply. This is supposed to be a three, seven, six. Invert and multiply. And then here you can cross cancel. Six goes into 35 times. Multiply straight across. Now that is 25 divided by seven, right? So seven goes in there three times and there's four left over, you always put this remainder four over the divisor. Okay. Three and four sevenths. Okay. Last one. It's pretty close there. All right, so this one, the time was fast. <clears throat> but notice any number divided by itself is one, right? Because you're asking how many of these are in here, right? You think about something like, for example, you know, eight divided by two, that's always my standard example. <laughs> So you're asking how many groups of two are in eight, right? How many groups of two are in eight? Yeah, I know, right? And there are four of them, right? There are four of them. And then how many groups of eight are in eight? Well, there's one group of eight in eight. Right, so really any number divided by itself is one, except for zero divided by zero, right? Remember that's undefined, you cannot divide by zero. But also if you inverted and multiplied, right, then you could cross cancel 11 goes into 11 once, and 13 goes into 13 once, and you multiply straight across, and you still get one. Okay. All right, so that's enough Kahoot for probably a while, right? Um, let's go back in and finish up these topics. Did I ever just show the end of uh... All right, well done, OJ, well done. And congrats to everyone on the podium. <laughs> All right. And again, don't feel bad. If, um, I hope you won't feel bad. If you didn't do well, or you didn't get some of those, um, you know, there's still time. We're here to learn this stuff. So I just want to encourage you not to give up and to just keep moving ahead. You can learn this stuff. 
All right, so we really only have two topics left, evaluating these expressions. And you might remember from earlier this week, evaluating means to find the value or find the number. So really what we're gonna do is just substitute this number negative six everywhere you see a Y. So we have you know, Y squared minus six times Y plus four. So everywhere there's a Y, you're gonna put negative six. The whole negative six has to get squared here. And then that's negative six times Y. Okay, so just a little note, there's so many ways we can write multiplication. Multiplication. Like for example, you know, two times three. We could also write with that little time sign we could write one in parentheses. We could write the other in parentheses because otherwise it would be 23, right? If you just write two digits next to each other, you would think it's 23. So you would have to put parentheses. You could also put both of them in parentheses. Okay. So when there's a letter, you know, like 2x or 2y, that means multiplication because it's right next to each other, okay? It's two times x or two times y. So here that's negative six times y or minus six times y. Okay. And again, you're substituting negative six in for y and the y is squared. So you have to put parentheses around the negative six. And then negative six times negative six is positive 36. And then you have minus six times minus six. Again, that's positive 36. Okay, so that's 72 plus four is 76. Okay. And let's just see the Alex explanation. Okay, they do the same thing. Sometimes they use pretty colors, but here they do. All right, so here you just substitute the three in everywhere you see an M. So three squared plus five times three, et cetera. And then you use your order of operations. Three squared is nine, five times three is 15, and then add. Okay, so we really need to be careful when it's negative. You guys wanna try that? Okay, so you wanna put the negative three in there and now because it's negative and you want the square to be on the whole negative, you have to put parentheses around it. 
So the negative three gets squared, not just the three. Right, and here you put the negative three in parentheses. All right, good, JD. Okay. Okay, and here's the last topic. So evaluate and now with fractions. Okay, so again, <clears throat> you guys are going to want to make sure that you're comfy with fractions as we move forward. Okay, you're still just going to substitute in the negative five six for the x and substitute in the negative two fifths for y. Okay, so here they did colors. They replaced the x with the negative five sixths, and they replaced the y with the negative two fifths. And then here you can multiply straight across. One times two is two, two times five is 10, and you have a positive times a negative gives you a negative. And then find the least common denominator of six and 10, just 30. <clears throat> Convert each one to 30th and then subtract. Okay, so try this one. So a good question is, what does it mean to write your answer in simplest form? And that means that your number is completely simplified. So just as an example, you know, if you have a fraction like this, you would want to simplify it. Right? Or if you had a fraction, just making stuff up. <laughs> like this, right, you would want to simplify it. So divide top and bottom by three. Okay, and if you still had some operation to do, like you wouldn't just enter an answer as two plus three, right? You would actually do the addition. So to be completely simplified, it means all of your operations have been carried out. Any fractions have been simplified, et cetera. Does that make sense? Did anybody get the answer yet?
little stuck. <laughs> okay. All right, so you want to substitute in the negative eight ninths for the C, and then substitute in the negative three eighths for the X. <clears throat> Multiply straight across here. One times three is three. Three times eight is 24. And then a negative times a positive <laughs> is a negative. All right, getting the LCD is a good step, right? So when you're looking for the LCD of nine and 24, right, nine is three times three. And 24, right, it's two times 12. 12 is four times three, right? Or it's eight times three. So that means the LCD, you need two, two uh, threes. You've already got one here, right? You wanna look at what's in common and then, you know, take everything else. So I guess, okay, the way I said it, I didn't circle in the same way. I'm doing stuff in my head. Because I really don't do it this way. <laughs> but it's a good way to learn. You take what's in common and then take everything else. So you need these two threes. and those three twos. Okay. Um, and then you gotta convert both to 72s. So multiply, um, top and bottom by eight and top and bottom by three. And then they're both negative, so you can subtract. Okay. You guys wanna do one more? Okay, we got one answer at least, let's see. 
Bingo. You got it, JD. So here the LCD is a little easier, maybe. <laughs> is it the fractions or the substitution? That's difficult, or maybe both, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So we substitute those in, multiply straight across, find the LCD and convert them to the equivalent fractions, and then you can do the subtraction. Okay. So that is it, my friends. Congratulations on getting through your first week in your math class. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, make sure you're working in Alex. And let me know if I can be of any help, OK? Remember, we have free tutoring also at the Math Success Center. Um, all right, I'll see you guys Monday. You're welcome, Laura. Bye, everybody. You too, Sherry Lynn.